Yeah, yeah, check one, two, check one, two. Is this mic on? Is this mic on? Hey, listen, man. It's the one and only trend set of DJ Sense, and you're listening to Cocktails. Dirty Discussions with Kiki and Medina Monroe. Yeah. Today's cocktail is called Hot in the Twat. The ingredients that you need are Mezcal Casamigos Tequila and lemonade. That is really one of my favorite drinks. So you are going to take two shots of the Mezcal. It has like a smoky flavor to it. Um, If you don't like smokiness, you probably won't like it. It literally tastes like a smoked wing. You're going to pour it over ice, take some lemonade, pour it in, shake it up, stir, and sip. And it's called Hot in the Twat. (laughs) I love Mezcal. Do you like Mezcal? It's okay. I like it in some drinks, Mm -hmm. but sometimes the taste can be a little overpowering to me. I love it with lemonade. It kind of depends. It's like this hot, cool like just it reminds me of like just campfire ashes i like using that instead of um just like a regular tequila and a margarita i Mm -hmm. like that taste because it does have that smokiness and it's another flavor i can't really describe it but i know it's mezcal when i have it it's like like, a grill "Mm, i like it Mix that. Well, besides that taste, yeah. it's something else. Okay, so welcome back to Cocktail Story Discussions, you guys. Hey, y'all. Did you think of anything else you've been up to? Uh, <laughs> just living my little life, still trying to get a nigga to pay a bill. Well, good luck. <laughs> I was really getting lessons from Lex and Drea. Uh-huh. You were. <laughs> I was asking questions. We had a whole little uh, powwow. <clears throat> a whole about little powwow. It. Dick connections and all. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so we discovered this weekend uh, that uh, Medina, too, has a dick connection with one of our friends. It's so, <laughs> it's so refreshing when you can have a dick connection. It's just an open and honest dick connection. It's like mm-hmm. no one's mad. It's like this was just I was fucking up, too. Yeah. It was when uh, she and I found out about it, we laughed about it and shared experiences. <laughs> That, so we were doing that. We was clowning this nigga. Y'all had good experiences. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, Jesus. Mm. All right. So um, this uh, it, we're recording two in a day. That's so why I'm we're kind of tired. <laughs> yeah. So sorry, y'all. Um, but uh, before we talk about a few different topics today, I'm going to go ahead and do weird sex. This one's short. You said a man is not a necessity. A man is a luxury. Like dessert. Yeah. Man, it's absolutely not necessity. Did you mean that to sound mean and bitter? Oh, not at all. I adore dessert. I love men. I think men are the coolest. But you don't really need them to live. So, um, did you know that the average speed at which semen is ejaculated from the penis is 28 miles an hour? No, that's fast. That is fast. I'm like, is that real? But, you know, that's what it said. According to a widely cited finding from the Kinsey Institute, the pioneers of modern sex research, a man's ejaculate travels at a surprising, perhaps even alarming speed. For reference, 28 miles per hour is 20 percent faster than record than the record setting sprint made by. Do you say Usain or Usain Bolt? The track guy? I say Usain. Okay, Usain. Um, at the 2008 Olympics. That is crazy. That's crazy. Well, you're pregnant. So be <laughs> Shot careful. in there and Not ran up, up in your guts. Okay, no fucking thank you. Please stay away. Please stay away. He doesn't even have that anymore. All right. So, um, y'all, we went on our blind dates, finally. Finally. It was hard. Both of us. We really worked long and hard to try to find dates and people kept canceling and it was hard. Yeah, they kept canceling or just like they would stop responding. And okay, what, why do you think they were doing that? A couple of reasons. Theory. I think that for some, when they found out they had to pay for the date, uh-huh. I feel like that was, they were like, Oh no. And then mm-hmm. I feel like they maybe thought they would be talked about by whatever date they would pick, which that's, you wouldn't I mean maybe, but. I feel like they they realized they had to pay for the date and they were like, oh, never mind. And then some, I feel like they just got nervous. Yeah, I think so. And so just so y'all know, the deal with the dates was, well, I don't know if you did you. No, he did see me. He told me. 
Um, I showed Medina's date who she was. So it was really just blind to Medina. Now he didn't get a whole lot of information about her, but he was able to see her. So it definitely wasn't like a, oh, she not cute type of thing. Okay. You know, it the physical attraction part was probably the easiest part. Um, but it was like, they just could not commit. And then they're, they're agreeing to do stuff and then just ghosted. Through. I also think besides the money part, I think once they realized that they weren't just going to go on a date with you and that just be that, that they would have to talk about their experience. I don't think that they were scared to, um, hear what we had to say or any of that. I think they didn't want their other women to know about it. And so I'm just like, this is so hard. But it's like what we talk about all the time. It is. So we're like kind of used to it. I also think it can be nerve wracking because I think it's nerve wracking on our end too to hear what someone's going to say about what type of date you are. Yeah. That's the part I'm still nervous about mm-hmm. because I won't know until the until we post done. the videos. <laughs> yeah. So I'm anxious to hear what he's going to say. But okay, you went on your date first. Yes. So you should go first. What was it like and how are you feeling before? Oh my God, Kiki. Y'all, besties out there listening. I was scared as shit. I was very Why? scared. Um, I, I didn't know what he looked like. And mm-hmm. honestly, all of the horrible things were going through my mind. I was outside for maybe like 20 minutes before I actually walked in. I was on time and I'm never on time for dates. I'm not proud of that. I just Something always happens. But I was like, let me be on time. Uh-huh. So I was sitting outside talking to the phone to my sister. And I was just like... <sighs> You know, what if, what if Kiki tried to do some funny shit and I go in here and he's ratchet as fuck, pants sagging, you know, he's slobbing down on some ribs. Like, I was just really like, what if he... At a bowling alley? They got ribs there, I think. Oh. And so I was just like, you know, what if he isn't going to pay? I was thinking about all the things that could go wrong. What Mm -hmm. if he doesn't talk? What if he is... Uh, I was just like, what if he just looks sloppy? Like, is he going to try to kiss me? I was really terrified. Why did you think of all the negative things I, that could go instead of thinking, okay, this could be a good experience. I could meet somebody who's really attractive. I think it's just because the reputation of dating in Atlanta. It's mm. not really like you go on a date with somebody and y'all don't really talk no more. You'd be like, all right. Like, and then the talking portion, I like to talk. I like when somebody can hold a conversation with me. I bring up random shit all the time and I want you to just go with it. Okay. And so I was really worried about that. Is, is Was he going to be young? Was he going to be old? I was just, girl, I was scared. I was sweating. My ears was hot. That's how I felt walking in. <laughs> okay. So you get there and you meet him. Um, I'll let you say what you thought about his appearance, but right. how was the actual date? The actual date was good. It was a good date. I, I wasn't, I gave myself a time frame. I said that I was going to, if I wasn't having fun, I was going to leave in 30 minutes. Yeah. I wasn't <laughs> going to sit through that whole day. If I would, if it wasn't like a, if it was not it, I was going to be like, I have to go. And where were y'all? We went to, uh, Painted Pen. Okay. We went to Painted Pen and, um, when I first saw him, I was like, okay, not, not really my type, but he wasn't bad looking. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, he wasn't bad looking. I, he was there and he came walking. <laughs> <laughs> the look on your face. I don't even know what it means. He was tall. He was tall. Mm-hmm. He's tall. And he was a very nice young man. The conversation that y'all had, like, what was it like? Did did you feel like you were interviewing him or did it feel more natural? For a minute, it felt like interviewing. Um, and then it, it started to get more natural. Like, I just uh-huh. started, I, I just stopped asking questions that anything that could seem like interviewing questions. And then I would ask him, like, okay, ask me some real stuff. Like, uh-huh. you know, and just, let's just have like a conversation. Like, what are your friends like? Mm-hmm. Do you listen to cocktails? Do any of your girlfriends listen to cocktails? And then he started telling me about like his friends and stuff. And mm-hmm. it was, it was cool. He didn't get to sit down because there was no room at the bar. He was a gentleman. That's mm-hmm. what I will say about this young man. He mm-hmm. was a gentleman. Well, that's good. Um, Let me think what else. So I don't want to give too much away. Y'all need to watch this video. Um, Yeah, because he still has to give his side. So remember, um, they'll be on Patreon. You have to subscribe on Patreon to um, hear the full things about our blind dates. But these are the first ones. Yeah. So So hopefully they'll get better and better. Yeah. It'll be cool to see how they go. Mm -hmm. So how was your date? My date was good. We actually went to a place that I've been wanting to try. Mm -hmm. I did not know what to expect either. I honestly thought you were going to, and you did, 
um, <laughs> try to get me on a date with somebody who doesn't meet something mm-hmm. that I said that I wanted. Like to push, I guess, to get me out of my comfort zone. Mm-hmm. You did. Um, y'all know what I say all of the time. <laughs> this man was much younger than me. He was 23. <laughs> um, We were about the same height. <laughs> he gave me a look. You saw her look at me like. Because I was just like, I knew she was going to do this, right? That's what I was thinking. Because we were talking, like, there was nothing wrong with him. He wasn't an unattractive guy mm-hmm. at all. But it really did force me to, like, not really prejudge him mm-hmm. or not prejudge anyone else. Because we had a conversation. Now, normally, if somebody tells me they're fucking 23, I'm sorry. I'm not mm-hmm. about to babysit you. I actually have a younger sister who might be more suitable is what I'm going mm-hmm. to be thinking. But he was actually really cool, really mature. We had good conversation. Um, and he was a gentleman as well. Um, what else will I say? Um, I was very nervous, uh, for much of the time. It's nerve wracking. Yeah. Cause it's like, you're here and you're getting to know somebody. But then he told me, oh, this is the other thing. Medina told me she didn't know him. <laughs> She told me it, he was a friend of someone that she works with, which may very b- well be true, but she also did know him. <laughs> so he was like, oh, so what did Medina tell you about me? I was like, well, Medina told me she didn't know you. So he like laughed and was like, we work together. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, Medina, like all of these things that she's done. Right. So um, I was like, oh. Okay, well, yeah, she told me that. I don't know. Maybe she didn't want me to, like, try and look you up. Yeah, because you would have. That's a kiki thing to do. Whatever. So then I was like, well, did you know anything about the show? I'm guessing you do since y'all work together. He was like, yeah, I watched the episode with Kim on there. And I was like, (laughs) I, I was trying to, like, go back in my mind and think about what I talked about on mm-hmm. that show, on that episode. Cause I'm like, this is just not, I was just feeling like it's just not fair. Like you got to hear me say all kind of crazy off the wall stuff and really form an opinion besides whatever you may or may not have said about me. Then you watch that episode and it's like, fuck. But you know, it was still mm-hmm. cool. Um, the food was good. Where'd y'all go? We went to Imperial Fez. It's a Moroccan restaurant out here. And they typically, well, the, on the weekends, Friday and Saturday, they have belly dancers. But we went on a Thursday, so there were no belly that dancers. Then, okay, so I looked up the place online so that I wouldn't take forever to decide what I want. Because, you know, I'd be very indecisive. And for whatever reason, when I was looking at pictures, I thought you sat on the floor. That's what I thought. mm -mm, The tables are just really low and so is the seating. So I wore like this long dress thinking I could just sit cute, Mm -hmm. put my legs to the side. But it wasn't like that. And I just kept I was being weird. I just kept having to adjust myself because I was like, I don't want my pussy to fall out because (laughs) the dress that I wore, I couldn't wear panties with it like. I couldn't. And so then I'm just like, man, this is just, and then they bring the little towels for your hands. They don't do napkins. So I just covered myself with that. And I was like, I hope I don't flash this this young man because it's going to be so embarrassing. How was the conversation? Like, was it, were there ever dry moments of conversation? Mm, There was like quiet moments. I wouldn't say dry. I think the conversation went back and forth pretty decent. I did feel like I was interviewing him. Yeah. Um, Definitely felt like I was interviewing him. And then... Did you feel scared to eat? I didn't order food on my day. He asked me if I wanted to and I was scared to eat. Girl, please. <laughs> we had that five-course dinner, both of us. And we shared the food. And it was so much food. Neither one of us could eat that much. I didn't know what to expect. But he was like, he goes there all the time. You know I'm not going to be scared to eat. Now, that's not what I was afraid Did of. you take your leftovers? No. Okay. I didn't take you my leftovers. Can you wrap that up? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't take the leftovers. Um, but I did enjoy the food. I enjoyed the drinks. I did not get drunk. Um, I'm pretty sure he drank more than me. And he was like, you want another one? And I was like, normally I would say yes, but, but no. I'm going to be an adult here. And I'm not about to embarrass myself today because there's a video coming later. <laughs> well, I can't wait until y'all see these videos because I can't wait to hear I'm what they say. I'm excited to hear what my date said about me. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, I know what he said. I'm excited for you to hear too. I want to see your reaction. That's going to be the other cool part about all this. Okay. So those were our blind dates. Keep sending us submissions though, because we're going to keep 
doing We're going to keep that. this thing going. We're doing this for the people. We're trying to figure out what's going on. And I feel like the well, more dates I'm we go on. I'm doing it for me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see what's going on with me. Like, cause I don't, I don't really think that I'll be able to figure out what's going on for other people because everybody's so different. Like how I am on a date is not going to be how you are. So I I'm just saying you. in a sense of like what these men is doing, like, cause there is going to be a date where maybe even a couple where it's not going to go like they're, maybe they're not such a gentleman. Mm-hmm. Also, I want to let y'all know when I'm y'all pissed. see these men, if you're interested in them, let us know and maybe we can hook you up with them. Yeah. Okay, so something that I thought about, because you always talk about dating much older men, Mm, and then you set me up with a much younger man. Would you date someone who is significantly younger than you? If they were mature, or maybe if they weren't, maybe you want somebody who's not. No, I don't want somebody who's not. (laughs) I feel like lately my mom has really been talking about, like, you sure you want to end up with an older man and sometimes she'll be like look at me and your dad your dad is a lot older than me he doesn't want to do anything anymore what's their age difference like I the amount of years eight years I okay think. and that's not even a lot i date niggas that are way older than that so she's like look at that and she's like your dad doesn't really like to travel anymore mm-hmm. my mom does a lot of things by herself not that every older man is like that but he's starting to get experience. old and he likes to be in the house he doesn't want to go be like hanging out with friends and stuff he just doesn't want to do it and she was mm-hmm. like I really want you to think about that she's like you know you want kids mm-hmm. you are fun you like to do adventurous things and you, it'll be like that for a couple years of your marriage and then if he's 15 years older than you <laughs> she's like when you're 40 and that nigga's 60 he's not gonna be trying to go rock climbing like he's not unless you know you get with somebody <laughs> that used to be in the Olympics or something and so what did you think about all of those well, things that she was saying? You know, I was like, well, mom, like, I really want you to know that, like, I genuinely like older men. I like, that's what, when I'm What out, do you like about them? I like uh, that they, like, handle me in a certain way. I, I don't like having to, like, really teach you what I want, what I like. I feel like older men just already know. It's already a given. Like, if we go to lunch... It's not a problem to go to like lunch at Chops mm-hmm. or like, and I always bring it back to like a date idea because I don't know what else to compare it to. I'm not married, so it's not like he's paying my mortgage or like doing all this stuff. Which, so I, you just want them to know. I want you that to know you how to go treat somewhere nice. a woman. Not even just that. I'm, that's what I'm saying. I don't want to always compare it to like where we're going to eat at, but I just want you to know how to treat a woman. Like, that's really it. I feel like the older men that I've dealt with, they just know how to treat a woman from the way that you approach me mm-hmm. to even sometimes the way things end. Like, it's like a conversation. You can communicate a, m- most of the time, not all the time. There aren't like these blurred lines. It's mm-hmm. like, this is a clear, this is what I want. This is what I don't want. Mm-hmm. Even with the situation when we talked about the fuck boy, even though he did some fuck boy shit, he communicated his feelings and what, why he did what he did in a very grown man way. Uh-huh. It was honest and it hurt my feelings, but he was still very honest. Mm-hmm. And so it was just, it's just like, I don't really know how I like to, if I like you, I fall very quickly. Mm-hmm. So I, <laughs> I don't know how to deal right now at my, the age that I'm at now. I can't really deal with like some of the games that the young boys want to play. I can't deal with it. I'm going to get hurt. Mm-hmm. Not that a grown ass man, an older man isn't going to hurt me, but I just think what the younger dudes do is just, you're doing too much. You're doing too much. And I don't really want to be doing too much with you. And sometimes I feel, well, I mean, I guess this goes to like them playing games and hurting people. It's like sometimes I think that they are so stuck on like, still what other people want them to have in their life and they're not really comfortable enough to be like you know what I don't want something so traditional I don't have to be attached to somebody Mm -hmm. I can date multiple women and not lie about it right I can date multiple women and not feel like I have to commit to them to keep them in my life like you can really be a lot more sure about Mm -hmm. what you want that's the thing that I don't really like about the the young whippersnappers yeah and even like just like sometimes the ex- the things that younger dudes do. Like there was a guy that I met and he was on some shit like we were going to meet up one night. And I was like, OK, that he didn't have a plan because it was it was random. Even still, I think you should have a plan. And he was like, oh, well, me and my friends are here. Meet us here. And it was you too, and your friends. It was already too much talking. And I was like. I'm just not doing that. I'm not coming over to little five points. And then we Hell all no. going to. 
I'm not going to tacos and tequila. Now, do I have nights like that with my girls? Yeah, and we're going to do that. But like, That's I haven't met day. you before. I've never hung out with you before. Like, I'm cool kicking it with your friends. But like, you're talking about now we're going to go there and then meet me at my homeboy's house. And then, what are we doing? Huh? I'm not riding around forever. I do like a plan. I like for you to just know how to take charge. Like, however old you are. Mm-hmm. You know, you need to be able to be assertive and say what it is. And then also be comfortable when I, if you assert some bullshit that mm-hmm. I don't want, then I'm going to decline and I'm going back to sleep or watch 90 Day Fiance. Like, yeah. I normally do. Like, hmm. I just feel like the communication be off. Now, I am not saying I won't date a dunger, a, a dunger, a younger dude, because look, there are some younger dudes who do have it together. <laughs> there are. And, and I think it's just what turns, what, I guess the judgment that I have in my head initially when somebody tells me that they're young, it's just like, oh gosh, let me keep talking to you and see what kind of vibe mm-hmm. I'm getting from you. Yeah. And I've been trying to give the younger ones a chance because, quite frankly, I do want to grow with somebody. So I've noticed the older men that I date, they're already established. They've already got what they got. They went through their struggles. Mm-hmm. I'm not going through a struggle with you, at least not like a, str- a struggle where it's like we're going to like grow together from this. Like as far as like financial or anything, I do sometimes like those stories of like we started a business together and like I we helped each other like do this and do that. I do like some of those stories. Some of them. There's not many, but there's some. That, but I'm like, well, I do want to grow with my babe. And so maybe getting with somebody my age and like having kids with him and he doesn't have any kids. And we have our like a lot of firsts together. Like mm-hmm. I'm your first marriage. A lot of times with older guys, I'm not going to be your first marriage. And you yeah. already got five kids. Yeah. So sometimes they might not want any more. Yeah. Lately, I've been trying to give the younger ones a shot. I recently met a dude who's young, but he's also foreign. And it's mm-hmm. a totally different vibe is he younger than you or just younger than he's what younger you typically than me. date oh. he's younger than me not by a lot i think mm-hmm. like three years okay not younger not but to me that's young like are you yeah. i like i'm that's 45 a big difference. and up yeah but he's like foreign and like is just a little bit different what's different with him he literally like said like what it is that he's dating for and that's uh-huh. that's rare with men you never really get dudes they just be like you know we just you don't really even really talk about why you're dating he's like i want to be married in the next two years and i want to have kids I find that with a lot of guys who are like 37 plus who don't have kids. They are like, I don't know if their clock is ticking in their head or what, but they're like, you know, this is what I want. And, you know, if you don't want it to, then let me know. Usually I don't because they'd be talking about <laughs> popping out babies like ASAP. They're ready to get married. They want to have kids. That real like, life hits. I think people be like, I don't want to be lonely. I really got to. You really getting old. Well, I just send them on their way because they're much older than me. And if they want to have babies, you're not getting it from me. And I would be selfish to be like, oh, well, yeah. No, nah, nigga, I don't want it. So go get it from uh somebody else. Nigga, it's not going to no. be me. Mm-mm. Yeah. No, no, no. What? But I am trying to like. Give people open, a chance. Yeah. Maybe not so much age. I haven't really met many guys who are young, younger than me, mm-hmm. to be honest. Um, But I think that's because lately I've been doing old people stuff. So I'm not really running into them, but mm-hmm. I'm going to stop like shooting so many people down just based off of little things. Yeah. And at least try for a day. That's all I can commit to. I feel you. I used to always shoot niggas down and slid in my DMs. I'm not with the sliding in my DMs. And then I was mm-hmm. like, you know, let me open my mind and give it a try. And I let, I gave somebody a try. We went on a date. It was so much fun. I'm actually glad he slid in my DMs. Yeah. I used to be against the DMs, but now or not even now, but for a while now, I've just felt like sometimes you would never run into certain people just because the world really is so big mm-hmm. and social media makes it smaller. And if they don't see you in real life, like, do you really want to miss that connection just because that's the only way that they could reach right. out? Now, if it's somebody I see all the time and they choose to slide in the DMs, that's a turn off. But if I've never seen you and we just came across each other's page, just slide up in the thing. Yeah. And, and yeah. I would say that it took a, he's like the thousandth one that I actually was like, okay, I'm going to give you a shot. Most mm-hmm. of them are going to be, not it. But he was cool as shit. And I'm like, wow, I'm so glad you slid into my DMs. Well, hopefully um, it stays going well. So what did you want to say about moving too fast? Do you think there's such thing as moving too fast? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. I think that when you start rushing to build a life with somebody that you haven't um, really spent the time to get to know mm-hmm. in different situations. I think that's a big part of it. Um, you gotta, 
deal with people in different situations, see how they are when they're having a bad day, when they're having a good day, how they mm-hmm. are with their family, um, what they say about their family, how they are with their friends. Do they have friends? You know, just if you do something to disappoint them or upset them, how are they reacting to that? Mm -hmm. You got to. And I think that situations like that, you can always ask somebody, but it's not until you actually see it for yourself that you get what it is. So when you start doing things like moving in together, trying to have kids, um, talking about marriage, like it's about to happen before you experience these things. I think that's too fast. I wouldn't mm-hmm. say I can really say it's like a timeline. Like, yeah. oh, you can't fall in love in a week. I wouldn't say that. But um, I definitely think you can move too fast. I think you, you can move too fast, too. I definitely think you can move too fast. And it's funny coming from me because I'm always like, I love him. I want to get married. Mm-hmm. And I still <laughs> will do that. I planned about 21 weddings this year alone. Oh, my God. <laughs> I think that's just my emotions. And when I like somebody, I just feel it. But that mo- you can't just rely on those that moment of bliss that you have in the beginning when you meet somebody. Because your blinders are on. Your blinders are on. You're just seeing all the good. And like Kiki said, like you don't know what somebody's like when they're upset. You don't even know if this nigga's married. Like, okay. You be like, you will really get to know somebody. When you really get to know somebody, you'll be like, wow, you really got me. I've been mm-hmm. got so many times that like... <sighs> Same. When I meet people that move, like I move fast in that sense with my emotions. But as far as like, oh... Let's move in together. Mm -hmm. Carlos and I moved in together. And I was dating Carlos for, what, six years before I moved in with him. And that was even still, like, a shock when we moved in together. It's a lie. I got friends that dating people and y'all just move in. And you're wondering why the relationship fell apart or why when you got pregnant it didn't work. It was because you didn't know him. And he didn't know you. Not just Mm -hmm. you didn't know him. You didn't know him. He didn't know you. I need to see what that family dynamic is like. That's really important. Because <laughs> that tells a lot. A story. It tells a whole story about what the fuck you got going on. I need to see, how are you like with your mom? Mm-hmm. If you do have, kid, have kids, what are you like with them? Mm-hmm. What's your daddy like? What are y'all all like together? Because when I bring people around my family, it's like you see the whole dynamic. You'll be like, I understand what now why you are where, why you are the way you are. If you meet my dad, you see my mom, you see all the vibe. I just want to see if this is going to mesh well mm-hmm. if we do get married and our families come together. Is it going to work? Or yeah. do your sisters got attitudes and your mama got an attitude and she not going to like me and they don't never want, they don't think nobody, you know what I mean? Or do y'all all talk to each other crazy? Not even how you would treat me, but like, how do you treat each other? Do you respect each other? Yeah. How are y'all talking to the kids? Do y'all, are the babies running around? Y'all like, little nigga, man up, little bitch ass nigga. Like, Did that happen? That, I have seen people talk to kids. Somebody like, that you were dating their family no. or just in general? No. Well, I haven't seen this, but there was a guy that I met recently oh. and he said that his sister, he was like, watch i'm gonna call my um my mom and listen and his mom like calls him nigga and stuff and like and that's what you do that's what you i'm not judging you but i don't like when i have kids for them to be around that (laughs) yeah but i have seen in the grocery store strangers be calling their kids little niggas and that's not cool with me if you gotta come from a family of that and you're calling the baby little bitch ass nigga (laughs) i i can't do it i can't do this that is crazy to me like (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> what the fuck? No. Yeah. But anyway, it's important to see the family, mm-hmm. the friends. And like sometimes, like I've dated some guys who have been like, they don't really want to talk about their ex, right? Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not saying I need to hear the whole rundown, but I do need to have a little insight. And I have found that the two guys that I think were uh, sociopaths, um, they didn't want to talk about it. They they made it a point to let me know that they didn't care who I had dated before. Mm-hmm. And I felt like it was because they wanted me to not care about what happened with their past relationships. Mm-hmm. Hell no. Like you said before, I'm a researcher. I'm nosy mm-hmm. as fuck. I want to know what happened. Why are you so like an- you can't even talk about it? Mm-hmm. That scares me because I feel like you probably did some crazy shit. And that's why you won't bring it up. Or I don't know. But I'm going to find out. Do you want them to tell you right away? No, but I feel like, you know, in time and conversation, as we talk about our life and dating experiences, period, like something should come up about the past. And um, depending on how long ago that last relationship was, I want to know, like, is she dead? Is she in the Chattahoochee? Mm -hmm. Did she come up missing? Or did y'all just grow apart? Mm -hmm. 
you know, or something in between. But like you, I'm watching Lifetime and the shit is scary out here. Yeah. People are crazy and I've been listening to these true crime podcasts. I mean, a lot is going on and in the world. And people can hide their crazy very well and for a long time. The craziest people, I think, are the best at it. Mm-hmm. That's how they keep getting people. And that's why it's important before, like, if, ladies, if you're like me and you get emotionally attached to people, okay, and you be wanting to get married, don't actually get married. Like, I've said that. Y'all have heard me say that a million times. I'm not actually, like, getting married. You got to, you do got to get to know people, like, in all different types of situations. Like, like you said, what do you like when you get mad or if we get in an argument or if you get jealous? We are a little jealous in this, but are you the type of jealous where you about to snatch me up in public? Yeah. Or, like, shut down and you can't talk about mm-hmm. it. Or what do you like in the wintertime when it gets cold? Mm-hmm. Because I know I can be a little uh, temperamental in the cold. I hate the cold. When it's cold, I just love warm Mm -hmm. ones. Like little things like that that can affect your mood. You want to see how a person is. Can I deal with this? She don't want to go outside in the wintertime. Is that going to be okay? You know. Also, I remember I went on a date with a guy, and I've said this before. He was really mean. A homeless guy came up and asked for some change, and he was mm-hmm. so fucking mean to him. Oh, I'm I talking like about that. like mean to a point where it's like it was disgusting. I could I never spoke to him again. He was like, "What happened?" I don't you even. Such a dick. You were. I, I don't. I'm not mean to homeless people. That's not my vibe. I'm not. I'm not. I'm kind to people. If you can't be kind to people because they're homeless, I can't fuck with you. Yeah, service people as well. Mm-hmm. Homeless people. Um, I can't stand somebody who like will be out at a restaurant and they just are so rude to the waiter. For no reason. And it's just like, okay, just because you're having a shitty day doesn't mean you have to treat them like shit. Like if you're they're... mean to animals, I can't fuck with you. I can't. Now, it's one thing if you're just like, I don't want the dog on the bed. Okay, cool. But if you're like, I yeah. really will kick a cat, or drown a kitten. No, I'm playing. So look, we played <laughs> a game this weekend. <laughs> And it was called Pick Your Poison. <laughs> and one of the options was would I drown a litter of kittens? And what was the other one? Let a snapping turtle oh, yeah. snap your genitals. Let a snapping turtle snap your genitals. I'm drowning the kittens. Now, under a normal circumstance, I'm not going to hurt the kittens. I know. I want the people to know. Because <laughs> the way you just looked at me, I would never really do that. But I'm also never letting a snapping turtle snap this piece. <laughs> so you have fun I that. said I would let the snapping turtle snap my puss. And One just, quick snap. It's gonna be, <laughs> it's gonna broke, be like a wax. You're gonna be bleeding out. Oh my it's like a wax. It's gonna snap the skin for real. Oh my goodness. Okay, so what about like Have you thought about talking to someone but are unsure of where to start? Better help makes it easy to connect with a licensed professional counselor, caring professionals specializing in the issues that you want to talk about. Join BetterHelp and get help at your own time and at your own pace. It's not a crisis hut. There are over 4,000 U.S. licensed therapists across all 50 states. BetterHelp is also available worldwide. You can start communicating in under 24 hours and it's available on your desktop, mobile web, Android, and iOS apps. And it's really easy to change the counselor if you need to. BetterHelp is about helping you. You schedule your secure video and phone sessions or you can text your therapist worldwide and you can start communicating in under 24 hours. It's a truly affordable option and Cocktails listeners get 10% off your first month with discount code Cocktails. If you've been wanting to talk, you can get started right now. Go to betterhelp.com slash cocktails. Simply fill out the questionnaire and get matched with a counselor you'll love. That's betterhelp.com slash cocktails. B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash C-O-C-K-T-A-L-E-S. Betterhelp.com slash cocktails. Expectations when you're dating. Expectations. That's great. That's a great topic like i currently have been wondering like okay with the expectations i told you about the italian stallion Mm -hmm. we met he's cool lives in new york okay when we met a couple weeks ago i was like oh my god like it's perfect he's perfect he booked his flight he coming to atlanta bitch Mm -hmm. he's coming for the weekend booked his hotel got everything together you know and Mm -hmm. i was like you know the heart in me is like i think he's cool as shit like should i 
expect him to pay for everything the whole weekend? Or should I be like, I got something? What? <laughs> why? You why? Just, why? Right? You just met him, right? Just recently, met him. like mm-hmm. a week or two ago, mm-hmm. right? If he lived here, I don't think he would have this conversation at all. So I think that just because he's from out of town, I don't think you should have to change that. You're right. Like, why change couldn't... your standards? Because if he couldn't afford to get here or if it was going to put him in a crunch, then he's irresponsible. And that's not what you want. Mm-hmm. You need a man, not a child. So I wouldn't expect um to pay for anything. Now, if you wanted to do something nice because it's your city and you live here and you felt comfortable and you were OK with like doing something, I might do something that took my time. Maybe I would cook him dinner. Mm-hmm. But I don't think I'm about to be out whining and dining. You just okay. came out here because if you lived in this bitch, I would not. So. Yeah, it was just it was a a thought. It was a thought. Like, but some people feel differently. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not, but I know some. <laughs> feel like, girl, just so we're clear, <laughs> yeah, you fly your ass out here. You still courting and taking, paying all the dates and okay. the dinners and the lunch and the drinks. Like, you're still, yeah, I'm still a woman, and that's how I like to be treated. Um, but I do have friends who um they don't mind splitting things, especially if it's like gonna be a few days of activities. Mm-hmm. Um. So, I mean, I get it. I get it. I was thinking, like, I want to take him. He he was like, uh, you know, he's not American, so he's never, like, been here. And he wants to go to the Coca-Cola factory. And I was like, okay, I think I'm just going to, like, get the tickets for the Coca-Cola. But that's it. Yeah. You could do that. That's it. <laughs> and that ain't even that cheap. I like the Coca- Coca-Cola factory. I have factory. only it's been cool. once, but I do love it. Yeah, I think I went twice. And one time when I was a kid. Um, But it's like a cool experience. It is. Okay. Um, what about like with sex? So, okay, if he's coming to visit. It's so funny that I was about to say, I was sitting here wondering like, what if I don't have sex with him? I'm always so quick to have sex. I'm not going to lie. If I feel mm-hmm. you, I'm fucking. Me but too. I kind of was like, maybe I want to switch the ropes a little bit. Like, I feel like he's coming here and he might expect to have sex with me because uh-huh. he is flying here and he did, you know, he's getting a hotel room. I'm probably going to stay at the hotel room. But I was like, what if I don't fuck you? Yeah, what if you don't? What do you think would be different? I don't know because mm. that's not So it's me. like you kind of want to <laughs> see? I kind of want to like change the expectation. Like, well, no, actually. Like you came here and that's great. Let's hang out. Mm-hmm. What do you think? You think that niggas are expecting the sex? It's not you um, flewed me out. You flewed yourself out. I think it... I think it really has more to do with the conversations that you guys have, Mm -hmm. if he's expecting sex or not, I think. Because guys have flown to visit me, and I don't know if they expected sex or not, but they didn't always get it, Mm -hmm. if that's what I wasn't feeling, you know, at the moment. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I'm pretty easy myself, so I would probably have sex. Easy peasy. Yeah. I don't (laughs) know. I wonder if he is expecting it. I think, I don't know. Maybe it's just uh, his level of maturity because, like, I was having this conversation about, like, trips and Mm -hmm. sex with some guys. And um, a lot of them felt like if it was somebody that they had never had sex with before, then they felt like if the vibe is there, then I would like it. But it doesn't have to happen. If it is somebody I've been fucking... You don't think so? I don't think men really mean that because I feel like if you don't mean it, you give me a separate room. I don't think so. I think that they really... Because sometimes... You've never felt okay to cuddle and then maybe didn't want to have sex? No, I have. But I'm saying, like, you still are trying to slowly but surely slide your dick I think that they want to, but they're just saying it's okay. Like, they're not going to be upset. It's not a deal breaker if we don't have sex just because we went on a trip together. Right. Like, Like, I want it, but if we don't have it, I want it, and I'm going to try you until you give in. Well, maybe not until you give in, but I'm going to try. Yeah. It's just weird to me. It's like, I feel like in situations like that, you should let the woman make the move. And don't, when they do the whole, when, dudes, when you go out of town, mm-hmm, I do. Mm-hmm. Cause I feel like it, that is like contradicting to me. Like you come out here and you don't, sex is not expected, but then like you're, you're trying to literally fuck me. Every but I think night. an expectation and a want are two different things. You know, like, yeah, I want to, but I don't expect, I'm not, Feeling like you're op- I don't want you to feel obligated mm-hmm. to do it. I want it. So, yes, I'm going to try. But do I expect it that it's just going to happen? No. I think if they just expected it, it would just happen, you know, or they're not going to try so hard because they expect it. And then they're going to have an attitude later if it never happens. I think they would be relying on the other person to just do it because they it's an expectation. I think all niggas have the expectation, but they still be nice. 
sometimes. <laughs> I could not imagine if a nigga really was like, so you really not going to fuck? Could you imagine if you really got mad? Like, and you're just sitting there like, well, well, what did you think I was a prostitute? I know sometimes I seem like it. I mean, I think I've only been out of town with two guys who I didn't have sex with. That's good. Um, yeah. And I don't, they didn't get mad. Like, um. I think that the second guy was hoping for it, but I don't even think the first guy expected it. Did they try you until the end of time? Mm-mm. Oh, that's good. They were flirty. Like, the first one, he gave me a ton of space. He probably has erectile dysfunction. He was very old. Maybe parts <laughs> don't work. So he was just he was just enjoying the time and being there with me and taking pictures of me. He didn't even want to get in the picture. He was just <laughs> like, I'm a, this Where is a at? nice place. Girl, He's probably, still alive? Mm-hmm, probably on a beach somewhere just vacationing. I wish he was cute because I would have gave him some. Girl. And then the other one, it was like he he tried to like be affectionate towards me, but I wasn't feeling him. And that was like our first date was out of town. Yeah, it's always hit or miss. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't it for me. Well, no I will thank surely you. be tempted this weekend. And if he is expecting it, he might get it. I don't know if he is or isn't. I'll feel the vibe out the first night. If you were to go to New York to visit him, would you, what would your expectation be as far as the money part is concerned? Like, do you feel like if you buy your ticket, he should get you a room somewhere? Or do you think you would stay with him? Like, if it was the first time hanging out. I feel like if I bought my ticket, he, yeah, I would expect him to get the room and make sure, like, my stay is comfy and it's a hotel room mm-hmm. and not at your place. And it's somewhere, like, if we have to ride the train and stuff, like, you, you just make sure I'm comfortable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. If I had to – also, if I had to buy my ticket, though, I might be like, maybe you should just come to Atlanta. <laughs> 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 but was, what if you just wanted to go wherever he lived? Okay, Maybe like, not New I just York. wanted to like you go. wanted to go there, and so it's like, okay, well, cool. You live there. I'll come visit. Yeah, then or, I would. I would. I would hope that he would be like, and I booked you a room here. I would hope that he would. And if mm-hmm. I if I really did like him though, I'm not going to even say that I wouldn't go. I would be like, can you send me some hotel suggestions? Even if I did have to like book my hotel room, even though I'm really not for that. But if I really <laughs> fuck with you and I like you, I will do it. But I'm just saying it puts you in a different category when you take the initiative to be like, I got it. Yeah. I mean, it's just a turn on when things it's are taken. It's a turn on. I love when everything is just like done. Check your email. Send you a gift. Check your cash app. Like, just send it. Like, you know, I need it or want Girl, it. Girl. Send that shit. I went on a date at Umi. <laughs> uh huh. Have you been there? Yeah. The man was like, Try anything on the menu you'd like. That mm-hmm. was a turn on. Like I was just like, that's really sexy. You gotta make money in this world. <laughs> you yeah. really do. Because it's like, you can't just do that with a regular. He was like, whatever. It's not like a problem. I was like, wow. Yes, yeah, it's, it's different to go out with somebody who has some money and mm-hmm. they want to spend it versus somebody else who's being super cheap. Like, damn, where are the prices at on this shit? Yeah, they got a, y'all got a happy hour. How menu? much is your Why did y'all we come special here? Yeah. today? Like, chill out. The pick somewhere else so that you can go eat. Because you can take home. me to Little Ray's. I like it. And it's affordable. For the next blind day, you can take <laughs> me to Little Ray's. It's Little good. Little Ray's is good. That goddamn queso it is, is good. Affordable. Okay, with the chicken and the guac in it. That That is a tasty place. Um. Okay, so did you have something else? No, girl. Okay, we're going to move on now to Indecisive Diane. And then we'll do the advice. Would you stop thinking about what everyone wants? Stop thinking about what I want, what he wants, what your parents want. What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What do you want? What do you want? All right, Diane. So what cute little date idea do you have for our amazing listeners and viewers this week? Hey, ladies, it's me, Indecisive Diane. I'm going to keep this short and quick. The people at the studio said you guys are running out of your time and I don't want you to be overcharged. Thanks for looking out, girl. So there's this place. It's called Imperial Fez. It's super dope. They have Indian food. They got belly dances on the weekend. You're going to love it. Here's the address. 2285 Peachtree Road, Northeast Atlanta, Georgia, 30309. Go there. Check it out. Tell me how you like it. Thanks, Diane. No problem, ladies. You're a little blind date. Yeah. 
I just wonder, like, would I have ever gone on a blind date had we not done it for the show? Probably not. You definitely wouldn't. Not blind. Think. Not blind. Yeah, I'll, like, let I've let people see. hook me up. Yeah, let me see. Tell me some information. Damn. It made it fun. It did make it fun. <laughs> fun and nerve wracking. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this one, the subject line is, I got a new man, but I miss my old dick. Mm. Okay. To Kiki and Medina, I'm a listener all the way from London. L- yes, London, UK. South London, too, the best part of London. Okay, let's get into it. Disclaimer, I am 21, but I'm in need of advice from older and more experienced women. In May, I met a really great guy at a party. Let's call him Jay. We danced, exchanged snaps, and bear in mind, I never give out my contact details to anyone, single or not. We spoke on the phone every single night, dusk till dawn, for four months straight. Within the first three months, he ate my pussy. I exchanged the favors. (laughs) This just seems so classy since she says from London, she said he ate my pussy. That was not, I thought they had gone on dates. Okay. He ate my pussy. I exchanged the favors, had sleepovers, but sex was never on the menu we quickly developed a friendship i mean i'd literally classify him as my best friend he brought out all different sides of me i never thought i had and we both agreed we would complement each other as a couple as well as friends honestly the way we were so close and matched like a puzzle it didn't make any sense why we didn't pursue each other although we were real close i vowed to myself i wouldn't catch feelings Psh- Y'all know, the more you resist it, the more it comes around to you. This nigga would just go above and beyond for me and the little things. And he did just made, and what he did made me just like him bit by bit. I did tell him I was feeling him and he confirmed the same, but we both suppressed it. So we never had to act on it. I don't know if y'all ever felt a nigga so much. He doesn't even have to touch you in order for your pussy to soak. Mm -hmm. This way, this was Jay. I'm 5'1", and he's 6'2", so I think that has something to do with it. Fast forward to August, we had sex um, officially, and literally five days later, I meet another guy who is my boyfriend of only one month now. Oh, let me tell y'all, my man eats my pussy so good, fucks my face, pussy so good, spits in my mouth, and does all the nasty rough shit Medina likes and then some (laughs) don't get me wrong he's my man for a reason i can see him being more of husband potential but i think we move way too quickly and i wasn't entirely ready for a relationship however jay is on my mind i miss him as my best friend i want to see him he makes me jumpy but i know another man is getting my pussy wet is so bad my man knows about jay only as my best guy friend though not that we fucked i told jay i've got a man now and our conversations went from everything to nothing because he wanted to respect me he said he don't give a fuck about my nigga i mean it's only right because but i didn't expect it what do y'all think should i cut off should i cut jay off and focus on my man or tell my man how i feel about our situation because i don't want to cheat on him i need someone like Gigi robinson to break down my astrology or shit because a bitch is confused well you can contact her Mm -hmm. love y'all here's pictures of me i would say my name um but medina (laughs) would tell me uh Huh. I'd be like, y'all really be when y'all say she's pretty. Yeah. Your eyelashes look good. Um, I would say like just because like you sound so classy and like you really don't want to cheat on him, and I'm always like cheat on that nigga. I would say talk to him about it. Like we just had a whole conversation about how young people don't communicate well and think that you can't tell he was a. Try telling him that that'll be a learning situation for him, for you, and for your relationship because maybe it might, maybe he might be like, well. Do you want to date other people and still date me? I I would say have the conversation. Yeah, just talk to him about it. And I mean, if he doesn't, well, maybe it'll make it easier for you because he's going to make the decision to break up. And then you could call Jay and go fuck him, Mm -hmm. you know, or let him eat your pussy or whatever y'all be doing together. Um, But I don't think that unless your boyfriend is open to an open relationship and you're open to an open relationship, I don't think it's going to be able to continue on like this because you still got this other man on your brain. On your mind. And you know that. That's why you wrote this. These are all just so long. Can we just read that one? Okay. Well, on that note, it's time for us to move on to the cocktails. Remember to send your cocktail to cocktails.atl at gmail.com if you have some sort of sexual confession that you want to share with us or if you embarrassed your ass. 
I really like those. Nice, funny one. I haven't been embarrassing myself, but that's only because I haven't been fucking. So hopefully I'll have something for you guys. I'm going to try really hard. Um, this last sex I had was boring. So nobody wants to hear that. Are you going to read a cocktail? I'm going to read a cocktail. You got an OG cocktail? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm going to read a cocktail. This one is... Whoa, that is long. It's a novel. Okay, I'm gonna wait until I'm drunk to read that one because that'll make it more entertaining. Um, um, Army Bay is here to stay. She says, hey, ladies, I love y'all and look forward to Thursdays to listen in. Y'all can call me Kay. Last year while on IG scrolling, I came across a handsome brother, gorgeous smile, cocky, fine enough to give me the courage to slide in his DMs and shoot my shot. Surprisingly enough, he bit the bait and said he was shocked to see a beautiful woman hit him with some game. <clears throat> it was a first. We went back and forth. For We went back and forth with the 21 questions of getting to know each other. I love that. We spoke over the phone a few more days, and he said he couldn't wait to come home to link up. He is active in the Army and away for training. When he came home, we meet up, and it was as if we knew each other for years. The vibe was amazing. He was even better looking in person. Damn, I just wanted to undress him and see what he was working with. But I told myself... Bitch, relax. He's a good one. We hung out. He whined and dined me for the next two weeks until he hit me with the news that he was leaving in a few days for deployment and didn't tell me so I wouldn't cut him off. Mm. I was upset, but I told him I'll wait for him since I was going to be occupied with school anyway. During this time away, he spoke regularly and sent pictures. We spoke regularly and sent pictures. I didn't have sex with him before he left because I just felt that it was too soon and didn't want him to think I was easy. Mm, you better than me. Right. <laughs> Fast forward. The year came. It was time for him to come home. Oh, the year came. From my IG from my IG story post, he saw I was out at our local lounge and surprised me with his arrival in front of my family. My drunk ass hugged and kissed him as if he was my man, y'all. My family was so confused, wondering who the fuck this man is. <laughs> I said, damn, baby, I miss you. And ordered an Uber immediately. Thankfully, I had popped some she orgasm pills <laughs> so I could have fun with my vibrator when I got home. As we went up the stairs, a piece of clothing was re- was removed. Army boot was full commando and ready for the moment. Oh. I lit some candles in the room to set the scene and told him to lay down. I felt his dick gracing my breast and stomach as I kissed every inch of his body from head to dick, giving him the sexiest, sloppiest head. I went to the balls and noticed his legs began to slightly open wider. I said, oh, he went to shits. And yes, I ate some man booty. He loved every stroke of my lick, um, of my licks ended with, damn, oh shit, baby, what the fuck? He picked me up to sit on his face as he ate my pussy like he had been fiending for it. I got in the Meg the Stallion position and slowly rode his D. With the sound of mac and cheese and his face of pleasure, it was worth the wait. He then flipped me over and told me to put my ass in the air. Favorite position. As he fucked me so good from the back, pulling my hair, he said, you a nasty bitch. And I replied, and you love it. Signed, welcome home. Oh, pussy. <sighs> okay, army dick. Okay. The welcome home pussy. People, those are some good stories, too. If y'all have some welcome home stories, welcome home dick or pussy, please do share. He wouldn't have been able to pop up on me like that. I had a whole nother nigga <laughs> <laughs> right at the lounge. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, this is my friend such and such. <laughs> I don't know what I would do if somebody popped up on me. Who Jesus. Well, okay. I'm not going to read a cocktail since I, I mean, I'm not telling my own. We'll save it. <laughs> we'll save it for when we get back. I hope you guys, um, uh, if you celebrate Christmas, I hope you had a great Christmas. Yes. I hope that you're spending time with your families and, uh, you're not, uh, there too long to where they get on your nerves. Have fun. Yes. Eat good. Um, so sending your cocktails, cocktails at ATL at gmail.com, advice to ask cocktails at gmail.com, and then follow us on Instagram at cocktails podcast. And I am at Kiki said so. I'm at Coffee Bean Dean. 
And until next week, you guys, goodbye. I'm sorry, but the person you called has a voice mailbox that has not been set up yet. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.